Hello guys, welcome back to the channel for another Databricks video. Today's video will be about implementing slowly changing dimension of type 2 in Databricks. Now, I know we've made a few videos about slowly changing dimension of type 2 using delta life tables, but let's say you, don't, you cannot afford delta life tables, you are on budget and you are looking for another solution. Another solution is to actually implement slowly changing dimension of type 2 using PySpark only. There is a good example in the Databricks documentation from a few years back. However, I don't think it can be used on production level. It's a good code, it's a, for a demo, it's good for an example, but since you have already created the right conditions, the code, okay, it's going to work, but I don't think you can use it on production level and that's why I haven't seen it in any of our clients. So today we are going to see another way of implementing slowly changing dimension of type 2 using PySpark only and it's not that complicated. It might not be the best solution possible but it's good enough to use it at work. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. Okay guys, so this is our Databricks notebook with all the code. First thing, we need to import the right libraries. Here we have sql.functions, sql data frame, sql window function, and from daytime, import daytime and time delta. And here is our first data set. We have the ID column, the name column, the occupation column, the age column, and the last one, which is a timestamp column. We provide some uh, fictitious uh, timestamp um, data here today's day minus 12 days before etc etc but in order to apply slowly changing dimension of type 2 usually you need a date column or a timestamp column if you don't have one in the original data you have to generate fictitious a uh, fictitious um, timestamp column when you ingest the data to the bronze layer so let's assume we have this timestamp column here and as you can see here we have this record with ID 1 and we update the occupation from diver, it goes to teacher and then engineer and we also uh, change the timestamp and here for record 4 this guy was an architect etc etc and this guy was a CEO now this is the first batch of data so let me import the libraries and uh, uh, run this uh, cell here and from this cell we are going to create a data frame here we are passing uh, the schema uh, the column names the id name occupation age and date column and we pass the dictionary here and we create a data frame that we are going to use to implement slowly changing dimension of type 2 how are we going to do that? Using this uh, instantiate, first of all, this object here, uh, scd2, and uh, we provide the initial values. That's a list of primary keys. You, we can have a composite key, multiple primary keys, so we need to have a list here, and then a date column in order to order the uh, the data, and then we provide a delete condition. So if someone wants uh, the records with uh, the record with ID equals one to get deleted we need to provide this deletion condition here right so and then on this uh, object here we execute the uh, execute function actually passing our data frame now let me show you the object here we have this class here and we have the init function to actually save, store our primary keys, the order column and the delete condition. And then we use the execute function here, passing the data frame. And as you can see, we use the apply uh, SED2 function. We pass the data frame, the primary keys, the order column and the delete condition here. And if we follow this function, apply slowly changing dimension, here is all the logic. We pass the variables, of course, and here is the logic. So, using this data frame, we create a struct 
and called underscore underscore version or you can call it whatever you want and first we need to create the date time valid from so in um, slowly changing dimension we have the valid from uh, date and the valid to date so we know that the record is open when the valid to day is null so we need to know the period where the record was valid so where the record was open so the first thing we have to do is create this column date valid from column and we are going to use the date column that we passed here as the valid from and then we need also need to create the valid to right so how can we do that using with column again uh, we go in this struct that we created up here and then with field using uh, date time valid to which is the new column that we are going to create within the struct so we have a struct with nested columns that's what we are trying to do this is uh, very important to understand that we are using a struct and then nested columns within this struct in order to perform slowly changing dimension of type 2 using PySpark so we have the valid from column which is the date column that we passed and then the valid to would be the next uh, the next date would be the next date from uh, the same record so for example here that's why we are using lead function here based on this uh, date column over window partition by the primary keys ordered by the order column the default order by is uh, descending in descending order and then we uh, we do a minus one seconds because uh, you know you can have exactly the same timestamp with the next record uh, and what I'm trying here to say is for example this guy here with record one the first record was uh, 12 days ago the second the second update for the this ID was 10 days ago and the third update was eight days ago so the valid from here the first time would be from 12 days and the valid two would be uh, to 10 days ago so between 12 days ago and 10 days ago and then the second time would be between 10 days ago and 8 days ago and the last record the last update here would be from 8 days and the valid 2 would be null because the record would still be open right so uh, what we are going to do here is actually run the code let me run this code run this cell as well and then run the code now uh, so we create back to the code back to the main code here we create the valid from the valid to column which is uh, using the lead function and then we need to create the deletion flag so remember we have using slowly changing dimension of type 2 we have a valid from column a valid to column and the deletion flag so here if the delete condition is true and if the date valid to is null so that means uh, if the record is open then the delete flag uh, let's uh, say that uh, we change it to true otherwise we change it to false right and the next step is when this flag that we created here in the previous step equals true and if the version if the valid to column is null which means that the record is still open then provide the current timestamp and close the record right otherwise just keep the old uh, valid to would would be null in if uh, if this is false and then we return the data frame so this is the whole logic here as you can see it's not that difficult basically we create a struct with three nested uh, columns and here so that's what we do in the first step of the execute function 
we call this apply slowly changing dimension type 2 function here that we just defined above we pass the data frame and the primary keys the date column and the delete condition and then we let's print the schema to see what we get here is the schema as you can see we have a struct here underscore underscore version and then a valid from timestamp column a valid to timestamp column and then the deleted flag which is a boolean right and what we need to do so we apply slowly changing dimension in the source data frame in the source data we apply slowly changing dimension we return the updated data frame here that's uh, what we get well, that's the new schema right because the initial columns were those five but then we added the struct and this is the updated schema so we have this updated data frame with the new columns and then we need to actually get the target load the target table and union the source data frame with the target data frame now i have this cuts function here when we try to load uh, a table that does not exist uh, return false if it exists return true and here so if the table already exists then read the table from uh, read the target table otherwise create a new empty data frame with the schema of the source data frame here that's what why we pass the schema here and then we need to union those data frames right uh, we use union by name you can also use this allow missing columns uh, option this is not necessary here but uh, it's good to know that uh, you can use it so if there is a schema evolution then you can union uh, data frames with different number of columns and we select all the columns here and then we apply slowly changing dimension again we apply the same function in the union data frame why do we do that because when we have uh, already a target table not the first time but the second time onwards when we have a target table then we need to perform slowly changing dimension in the union data frame again uh, in the whole data set uh, the, uh, because here at first we apply slowly changing dimension in the source data set but then we union with the target data set so then we have to reapply slowly changing dimension to the target data set so let's uh, this is the new schema let's see what we get we get five records here uh, three records for James right with all the updates as you can see inside the struct we have the valid from with the valid to so that's the 29th of uh, April and this is the 1st of May because that between those uh, two days this uh, version was correct and then delete flag equals false uh, the same goes for here valid from and valid to for two days and then we have again valid from and valid to for another few days from the 3rd of May to the 11th of May which is the current timestamp but as you can see the deleted flag here equals true and why is it equals true and why we closed the record because here we provided the delete condition so if the ID equals 1 then that means that this record with ID 1 got deleted and that's why the third uh, version of this record with James the last one also is a closed record with a valid from and valid today and the deleted flag equals true now it doesn't happen the same for the uh, those two records here as you can see we have a uh, valid from but the valid to is actually null because this record is still open so this record was valid from the 4th of uh, May up to uh, now this is uh, currently this is an open record uh, it's a valid record the same for this record as well now let's go to the second data set so this is the second data set we're, what we are going to do is actually update again we are going to insert 
this new record for James that he be, uh, became a developer and we are, are going to update uh, his record and then we are also going to update this record with ID number 4 and he just changed his occupation as well, right? But uh, we can also delete this record now, this record with ID 5 is still open but uh, if we provide the right condition, for example like if uh, ID equals 5 here it's going to close the record with ID 5 and it's also going to insert the new record so let me run this code again and let's see what we get here in the new data so nine records as expected here James got a new record and as you can see now the valid from is uh, this timestamp and the valid to is null because we reopened the record and here in the previous one you can see the record uh, was closed and here we reopened the record right and uh, now we have this guy here with ID 4 uh, this record was valid from this time to this one and then we updated his record so now this is the new open version of this record and uh, this guy with ID 5 now we deleted this uh, record so that's a closed record as well that's the deleted flag equals true and the same now this uh, uh, these records with ID 6 and 7 are new records and they are both open okay guys so this is how you can implement slowly changing the dimension of type 2 using only PySpark you don't have to use delta live tables now bear in mind that might not be the best way possible out there to implement slowly changing dimension but it's a pretty good way and I've seen it in global organizations so it's a pretty valid version of applying slowly changing dimension of type 2 using PySpark only we create the struct and the nested columns which is, which is if you think about it a pretty nifty way of doing that so I'm going to upload this notebook on GitHub so download this notebook, play around see how the code works, it's not very difficult we call the same function twice and that's it basically so hopefully you enjoyed the video if you like the video please click the like button subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and I will see you in the next one thank you